this is the question we ask everybody. Mm. So I'm going to ask you, because I'm not sure they have asked you this. Why Hernan Bots? And what they mean is, why, why is this relatively young artist from a, um, a city that isn't always thought of as the first city that you think of where mm. artists are coming from, um, what is it about the work that's really sort of engaged people? I mean, clearly the work mm. people are engaged. What, what do you think people are, are seeing and responding to in the work? I don't know, it's always been a mystery to me, too, to a degree, you know? <laughs> um, I, I think I've been lucky enough where I make work that I respond to, and I think with any artist, it just makes what they like. They want other people to respond to it similarly, and for me, it's, it's an indulgence. I think with any artist, it's an indulgence to make work that they would want to go to a museum and see in 100 years, too. I still scratch my head that people still look at my work, and especially being like, the, you know, uh, the Hernan from Miami that I still think I am to some degree. Like, this is ridiculous to me, you know? <laughs> Not in a bad way, but like, come on, you know, like, thank you, you know? <laughs> Do you think of audience at all when you're making work? I mean, does it ever occur to you that are people gonna understand this or how they're gonna respond to this movie? Um, definitely I think about the audience because I, I might have obscure references, but I, I, while I study obscure objects and references and things like that, I want the work to have a sort of pop bounce to it, where if I'm looking at Victorian mourning rites from like the 18th century, I want to make it look like something Warhol might be able to get away with too, you know, where um, an easy understanding of something that comes from a place that doesn't have to be super schooled in it, you know? Um, and by that I mean you don't have to read the Encyclopedia Britannica to sort of grasp, like, my obscure references. Decadence is uh, obviously it's a personal um, attitude. It's um, the Oxford Dictionary calls it a luxurious self-indulgence. Mm -hmm. But it's also, it also implies a kind of economic prosperity, doesn't it? I mean, I think mm -hmm. you kind of have to be rich to be decadent. You, you might go into a poor area very mirror and say, well, you know, in fact, there's, you know, the, the crumbling palace that mm -hmm. is sort of decadent. But I think you still have to be prosperous to appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So we're entering an economic period now that's pretty intense. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think that might affect the work somehow? Or? I don't think so. I, I think there's, there's different levels of decadence and different levels of what can appreci be appreciated as decadent. Um, um, I just bought a house in Detroit recently and we're driving down the neighborhood and on the lawn there's this giant sort of plaster black panther on the lawn and like that is just so motherfucking decadent, you know? Like, <laughs> and like it's gorgeous and like that to me is no different than like J.K. Hoosman's like tortoise, you know? Like, you know, you might be this, you know, um, Don Trotten sort of mentality and, you know, might not have the same finances that a 19th century dandy would but you make these same statements. And I think at this point in time, you're able to still be eccentric and decadent without having those finances anymore. And I think that's something that's changed in the course of history. And you know, if you go to friends' apartments in like the Lower East Side, like, they can decorate these places as if it's Louis XVI's castle, but it's made out of paper mache. You know? <laughs> so you can be decadent and not sort of have to have it covered in jewels. Like the tortoise upstairs, like, those are all fake jewels. You know? <laughs> We know that you look at major famous artists and make lots of references to art history. Do you also look at illustrators? And I, I was a comic book kid growing up, and I don't really talk about that too much, but I think it did have a, a bigger influence on me than I kind of think I can even admit to myself in a way. But, you know, I can be like Todd McFarlane, you know, did like X Factor, and, you know, <laughs> all these books. Like, I, I did have a whole sort of background of, of illustration in my, high, in my you know, head originally, but um, for me it's more about conveying a concept. If it happens to be through illustration, that's the avenue, like, conceptually that I will pursue. And um, it's weird that people sort of think of contemporary work, like someone like me or Laura Owens, for example, as being based off of illustration, because when I walk through like the Met, it's like illustration, illustration, <laughs> illustration, illustration. You know, it's 
you know, it's the lives of saints too. You know, it's, it's, I don't see the difference. I, it's, maybe it's a, it's a new conversation with contemporary art that I'm part of, but I don't know. <laughs> and, and I love certain illustrators, but, mm -hmm. but there is in, in, the, um, in the art critical world a distinction that's made, I think, oftentimes between illustration and mm -hmm. fine art. Is that, an is that a, a distinction that makes any sense to you? Where do you, how do you bring it over the line? I think it's not, in a, to an extent, it's not even up to me whether it, it, that goes over the line. I, I think it's up to the audience whether they think what, what I'm trying to convey surpasses. Because for me, illustration in the classical sense of children's books and things like that, it's, usually it's not their own ideas being conveyed. And you know, I look at a great children's book and it's rare that the author is also the illustrator. And in those instances, like for me, it's, I'm the idea guy and, you know, the illustrator, and I think that makes a big difference sometimes. So how much of a role does your family play in your life and work today? Are you um, close to your family? I'm closest to my siblings. I mean, I'm one of six. My, I have four, four brothers, and the oldest is a, is a girl, my sister. And for me, I was the third, third born, and my older brother and my older sister sort of were the the big influence on my life for the most part. Uh, like my sister read the Anne Rice novels and I would watch soap operas with her. And my older brother is like a bartender in New Orleans and it's like a mega goth, you know? <laughs> so I kind of didn't have much of a chance. Like I would watch Days of Our Lives with my sister and then listen to like Iron Maiden with my brother, you know? Like, so <laughs> it's like this weird mix. Were you a child when you realized that you were going to be an artist? Um, it's weird, like I never really remember having any other instinct to do anything else. Like with the one exception of like being in seventh grade and being a Floridian seventh grade child and wanting to be a marine biologist because that's what you do, you snorkel, you know? <laughs> but other than that, like, yeah, my, my father has recordings of me when I was four years old, like I paint, you know, like, yeah, it's weird. So, so you've always been an yeah. Does it matter to have a gay audience for you? Um, I would just say yes. Kathy <laughs> 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 Griffin. <And> then, <laughs> if the book was in a library, you wouldn't want it to fall mm -hmm. only into the gay study section. Yeah, so. because I, I don't like, I don't, I don't think even the best scholar of feminism or, or any other sort of marginalized group would want that, you know, I, I want it to be read by everybody. And I don't think that anyone can say otherwise. Like, you want your story to be universal, even if it's, you know, maybe not everyone's story. Um, everyone should read it, in my opinion. You know? And I certainly, I mean, I certainly feel that way throughout the work. Mm -hmm. But does, would you say that the more recent work is, is whether consciously or unconsciously, mm -hmm. becoming more generalized, more um, universal in, its, in, its, um, in the audience of my progress? I think it's always going to be, per se, queer, you know? Because my interests, most people would consider queer to begin with, you know? Like, right now I'm looking at, like, futurist dance from Russia, from, like, the turn of the century. It's like, <laughs> yeah, like, what straight artist is looking at that right now, you know? But, like, <laughs> so... You know, there's going to be that sensibility no matter what, but um, I just don't want, I just don't think it's necessary to write an art history that says the gay chapter, you know, the feminist chapter, the lesbo chapter, like, come on, it's just art, you know? Like, it, it just should be art, just the art history, not gay art history, not, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm.